So it gets a little bit trickier when multiple variables are in a slot. When variables are sequentially arranged and the sum of all the variables is less than or equal to 32 bytes, just like what we have here. Now imagine we try to read variable C. Let's run this. And from slot 0 where we have variable C, we are going to get this back where all the variables are packed in a slot. As you can see, we have this one here that corresponds with the A that we declared. We have this 2 here that corresponds with the B that we declared. We have this 4 here also that corresponds with the C that we declared. We have this 5 here that corresponds with the D that we declared. Then we have this 1 here that corresponds with the boolean that we declared above. Solid doesn't have problem in reading this value. If we try to get all this value in a conventional way, we are not going to be having any problem because of the public visibility that we had here. Now, how do we get the variable that we care about in yield? Because yield gives us an offset. So the first thing we are going to be doing is to know where exactly variable C is located in a slot. So I have a function here. And what this function actually does is to return the slot of where variable C is and also return the offset of where variable C is actually located in this slot. So by the time we run this and we get the offset of C, the slot is going to be 0 and the offset is going to be 28. This is quite useful because this is telling us where exactly in slot zero variable c is actually located so what does this 28 actually means if you check this you notice that we have 16 bytes and another 12 byte before we have variable c so adding this 16 plus 12 together will give us 28 that is where variable c is actually located which is 28 bytes if you are reading downward after the next 28 bytes we are going to get variable c just like what we have here from slot zero we want to read all the variables that is inside so it said after 28 bytes we are going to be getting the variable that we actually care about so if if we say we should copy this and we say we want to get the length of this then we divide it by 2 it's going to give us 28 and what this actually means is if we go to the next 28 bytes we are going to be getting the variable that we care about so what this actually means is if we want to read variable c that it will insist in from this slot we can actually shift to the right on this slot by 28 bytes so let's see that in action so i have already created a function that returns you insisting because the variable c that we want to get the value is you insisting so what we are going to be doing first is to load the slot value into a variable so what we are going to be doing is to set our slot to be equals to s load because we need to load the variable that is inside which is c dot slot so what this will actually return is this will return this value that we have here let's bring this and put it here for convenience sake so our slot will be returning this value so the next thing we are going to be doing is to get the offset of where c is actually located so we are going to set our offset to be equals to c dot offset and what this will actually return is 28 because from what we have here we have our offset to be set to be 28 and also the next thing we are now going to be doing is to be shifting to the right so we are going to be setting our return to be equals to shift right and what we are going to be doing is we are going to be passing in our offset and also we are going to be passing in the slot that we want to actually shift into which is this byte so what this will actually do is from the documentation of yule shift right y by x bits and because it said we should shift right y this is slots by x bits and the offset that we are getting here is in bytes not in bits so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking for how to actually get the bits of this offset and mind you we already know that one byte is equals to 8 bits so what we are now going to be doing is to be multiplying this offset by 8 bits so we can now set multiply the offset that we have by 8 and so another thing is we can actually add code these values that we have here because it's actually been known at compilation time it's going to be returning something that looks like this so what we really want to do is we have our slot value here so since we are shifting to the right it's going to this one is going to turn to zero and this one also is going to be vanishing so what it's now going to do is it's now going to clear all this and return this value but instead of returning this value it's going to be replacing it by this so it's now get the last 16 bytes which is what we have here so let's see that in action let's clear this and we run this by the time we get our variable c it's going to return 4 which is what we have here we can actually use this for all the all the variables that we declare above here so in order to actually understand how shift right actually works in details i have a simple illustration that we can actually use to demonstrate this so we have this illustration here that shifts 10 to the right by two bits so and this is the binary representation of the value 10 that we have here so the first time we are going to be shifting this binary representation of 10 to the right we are going to be losing this value and all the 
bits that we have behind this value is going to be rearranged so we are going to be having something that looks like this so because we've actually lost this first value so this one is going to be replacing this first value which is why we have this here and the last value that we have here is going to be zero that's the first time we are shifting so the sum of all this is going to be five so anytime we are shifting right it's going to carry this value and divide it by two so we have five here four plus one is equals to five and the next time we are going to be shifting to the right we are going to be losing this value that we have here if you notice we actually shift to the right another time this value that we have here we are losing it here so by the time we now shift all this all this value to the right this is what we now have we now have two here so shift right actually works in a way that shift all this binary representation of a value to the right by the numbers of bits that we have which is this two here so coming back to what we have in order to explain this better so we have this slot here as we've mentioned so by the time we shift to the right we are going to be losing the one that we have here which is going to be zero and when you get to the 16th byte which is where we have this two we shift it to the right also we are going to be losing that value which is zero so what we are going to be having left is the value that we have this way because we've actually shifted everything to the right and we need to just replace everything behind it back with zero so we are from this value that is remaining we are now reading in 16 from there but we are going to be having issue if we say we should change the return type to be unit 256 because you actually works with by 32 which is equivalent to unit 256 so by the time we now say we should rerun this we are going to be getting this large value back so how do we now solve this so in order for us to actually solve this we are going to be using maxing operation um for us to actually solve this let's changes to let shifted so we are going to change this to shifted then we are going to set our return value to be equals to so our return now will now be equals to um we are going to be using and operation so what we are now going to be doing is you are going to be seeing a lot of this as time goes on f f f f uh we are going to be explaining that in details so we are now going to be passing it into shifted so what this what this actually means under the hood is this f is actually a bunch of one under the hood so let's just copy this and see what this actually means so if we want to check the binary representation of what all this value actually means you notice that it just returns a bunch of one 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 and what this is going to give us is something that looks like this so this is going to return something that looks like this and it's going to be comparing it with what we have above here and how an operation actually works i've already created a simple illustration to actually demonstrate this so we have x and y here and when x is equals to zero and y is zero it's going to return zero and when x is equals to one and y is equals to zero it's going to return zero when x is one and y is one that's when we are going to return in one so coming back to what we have here when the value is one and it's been maxed with zero it's going to return zero but when the value is one and it's been maxed with one it's going to keep the value that we have here so by the time we now rerun this and we load variable it's going to return four even though the return value if you in 256 so now let's talk about writing to c the reason why writing variables that are smaller than 32 bytes is a little bit trickier is because the ethereum virtual machine is only able to write in 32 bytes increments so if we say we should write to slot zero in an attempt to change this variable c with the method that we actually explored earlier which is what we have here when we rerun this and we said we want to actually change variable c in an attempt to write to slot zero we now input 10 is it's obviously going to cluster with other variables that we have within this slot which is obviously undesirable so in order to solve this we are going to be using bit masking and bit shifting let's see that in action so i already have this function that we are going to be explaining in a bit let's rerun this and we see how it works so by the time we write to new c the value of 8 because c is initially set to 4 by the time we write to new c the value of 8 and we get c is going to be resetting it back to 8 so by the time we say we should read from slot 0 what the value of c will actually be now is going to be 8 so what's really happening under the hood the first thing that we are going to be taking note is the news that we actually input here under the hood because evm actually represents every variable in the form of a 32 bytes so we are going to be having something that looks like this so this is the byte 32 representation of the value 8 that we input so what we are now going to be doing is to load all the value that we have in the slots just like what we did the other time so when we load this value we load c to be here so we are going to be having something that looks like this where we already preserve the value of 1 which corresponds to 
okay that we have above and the value of 2 which corresponds to the b that we have above and the value of 4 which corresponds to the previous c that we have above and 5 and 1 respectively so what we can actually do now is to take advantage of the logical and operator that we used the other time when we say the value and 0 is going to return 0 and if we have a value and we add it to ff which is 1 1 is going to return the value back the c that we have is actually has 2 bytes which is unit 16 what we are going to be clearing and since we cleared it we are going to be having the max this way and the value that we have which is c we are going to be having it here even also we should use the logical and to check this value and what we have as a max here what we are going to be getting back is what we called clear c here so what it's going to be doing is it's going to be clearing every value that we have inside this byte which is going to give us this value here so the next thing we are now going to be doing is to shift to the left the new c that we have by the offset of c the next thing we are now going to be doing is to use the logical or and how logical or actually works is when we have a value with zero it's going to return the value so this is how we're able to derive this new value that we have here and we just ensure that we store it back into the slot that we actually deleted it from so that is how we're able to update the value c in you